This is the first special episode of the Atlantic Bridge podcast explaining to you the political system of Germany. So if you are out for some discussion between your regular hosts of this show, you have to listen no further because there is no discussion forthcoming. This will be just me telling you some facts about the political system of Germany. So let's get started. What you can see here in this first image is the European Union in blue, like here and Germany in its national colors here. I am living in this region, the southwestern tip of Germany, in the state of Baden-Württemberg, uh, right in the vicinity of its state capital of Stuttgart. In this image here, I have for you two maps of Germany. The first one here on the left is a political map that shows you the different states of which Germany is comprised. And what you can see in this image right away is that much like in the United States of America, there are big states and there are small states. There are 16 states in total and three of them are city states, you know, a little bit like Washington DC. So what we have here is uh, Bremen, here is Hamburg and here Berlin. The other states are in measuring degrees larger. The smallest of the large states is the Saarland and the biggest state of all is Bavaria here or as it is called in German Bayern. Again this is where I live. So uh, those states uh, are all represented in the German uh, political system. So keep them in mind when we will get into the details of the system later on. On the right here, uh, the map is colored in a western half and an eastern half. And this is kind of important if you talk about German politics, because western Germany, of course, comp is comprised of the three former occupation areas after World War II of Great Britain, France and the United States, and later formed uh, a democratic state, the West German Republic, which is still very much what Germany is today. And the eastern part here was under Soviet occupation and uh, became its own state, the so-called uh, Democratic Republic uh, of Germany. And this state ended in 1990 and was reunited with the rest. So if we talk about West Germany and East Germany, this is very much still the old um, divisions of the post-war era. And Eastern Germany today is still a little bit different from West Germany in terms of economic status, in terms of culture, and uh, in terms of, um, how do you say this, uh, self-perception, I guess. So what you have here is the Reichstag. This is the German parliament. Uh, it is situated in Berlin. And the building itself is pretty old. It was built in the old uh, German Reich when there was still a Kaiser, which is uh, why it sports this nice inscription here, which says to the German people, because it was more or less seen as a present of the Kaiser to his very loyal, of course, uh, people. So it comes from an age in which democracy wasn't exactly viewed as something coming from the people, but granted by the sovereign ruler. Today, of course, um, this history has largely been overcome. And so this is the real parliamentary seat of the German state. Um, the glass up here uh, is a visitor's a dome which you can actually go up in and visit and look down into the parliamentary uh, chamber, which is pretty cool. And now let's go into the meaty stuff. This is a scheme of the German political system. We have the people down here who are electing stuff. And then we have the several branches of government. In lighter blue is the executive branch. In gray, the judicial branch. And in this I don't know what it's called, orange, sepia, uh, that is the legislative branch. So the German people basically have two things on a national level uh, that need to be elected. And this is one, 
the Bundestag, which is our parliament. And if all things go as they should, it is elected every four years. And this is the first real special thing about the German political system, if you compare it with uh, the American one. It is possible to cut the uh, legislative period short. So the Bundestag can uh, request from the president uh, to be dissolved and new elections uh, be done. This has happened several times over German history, uh, the last time in 2005, and it is usually done if the chancellor, who is up here, and we will talk about him or her in a second, Uh, if the chancellor is not able to have a governing coalition in the Bundestag anymore. So uh, the Bundestag is elected, as I said, every four years by every German citizen age 18 or older, and uh, it is elected on lists. So you have two votes if you are going to vote for the Bundestag. And the first vote is much comparable to what you would vote uh, for in the United States, like a congressional district. We have something like that as well. It's called the direct mandate. And you are electing persons with this, your first vote. So uh, if you are living in, um, for example, Stuttgart 1, then you are uh, electing one representative for Stuttgart 1, and whoever gets the most votes, first past the post, is elected directly into the Bundestag. But only half of the representatives in the Bundestag are elected like this. The other half is going to be allocated over the second vote that everyone has, and uh, with your second vote, you're voting for a party list. So uh, let's say I want to uh, elect a leftist candidate, right? Since Germany is a parliamentary system, I have several left-leaning parties I can choose from. But uh, since only the strongest one has a realistic shot at the uh, at the first vote win, which is first past the post, I need or may need to uh, split my vote here. So let's say, for example, I vote for the Social Democrats because they have the better chance to win the direct vote uh, with my first vote, and then I vote for the Green Party with my second vote. So if everything goes according to plan, I elect two people, one Social Democrat with my direct mandate and one Green Party candidate or more with my second vote. If everything does not go according to plan, then, for example, the direct vote winner would be a conservative, in which case my first vote is lost, but my second vote is rescued. Uh, It will go directly to the Green Party and they will uh, elect some people based on their party list. So, for example, if in my state of Baden-Württemberg there are 60 people that can get elected over party lists and the Green Party is gathering 10% of the vote for the second vote of the second votes, then six people will go into parliament of the Green Party and the rest will be allocated among the other parties. So this is how the Bundestag is elected and comprised. So usually you have several parties in it. Uh, The lowest number of parties we ever had was three. That was mainly in the 60s. And today it is five. Today it is four. Uh, It has been five. It may be six after the next election. So this is really um, always in flux. I will go over the parties that we have a little bit later on. So, um, the next important thing that you need to know, and you can see it at this arrow here, the executive is not elected by the people at all. Instead, the Bundestag elects the chancellor, and the chancellor in turn uh, appoints the federal cabinet, much like in the United States. This means that whenever you are voting for the Bundestag, you are also indirectly voting for whoever gets chancellor. Um, because if, for example, the conservatives would gather 51% of the vote, of course, they would elect one of their own as chancellor. Now, this has happened exactly once in German history in 1957, and it is not very likely to happen again. So the normal thing for German political parties to do after an election is to form a coalition government 
for example, right now we have a center coalition between the conservatives and the social democrats. They are the two largest parties. And after the last election, no single party had a majority, as is normally the case in Germany. But the pref preferred coalitions were not um, viable as well. So those two, who are the main uh, protagonists of the German political system, had to work together, and they have done so ever since. Uh, that was in 2013, and um, it is at least a possibility that this coalition will subsist after 2017 elections. But um, this is what you need to do. You have to have a coalition that comprises of at least 51% of the vote and this coalition can then go on and elect a chancellor. Um, this nature of coalition governments requires an inbuilt compromise between the parties that are going into a coalition. So um, unlike in the United States for example where usually one party makes up the whole executive branch because they won the presidential elections, here the parties have to compromise with each other in order to form a government. They can't really get around this problem. Um, on the other, um, of course, the parties are not as broad as our parties in the United States. So uh, the coalition building process is much like the intra-party coalition building that you have in the United States, for example. Um, it is just a different method of arriving at consensus, not a totally different system. So this is the chancellor then. Uh, he or she is the head of government, but not the head of state. This is the president, the German president. And if you have never heard of him or her, that is no wonder, because the president really doesn't have to do all that much. It is largely a ceremonial role. The chancellor is uh, where the sausages are made. It is the most powerful position that you can have in the German political system. He or she appoints the federal cabinet and has of course also the discretion to fire ministers if he or she wants to. And uh, again, in notable con uh, contrast to the American system, the executive has a formalized and strong role within the legislative process. Because since Every chancellor is dependent on his or her majority within the Bundestag. They have to be um, in the legislative process anyway. There is simply no chance that you can go like you do in the United States and say uh, we have a separation of powers and there is a different majority in the parliament than there is in the executive. The majorities in the executive and in the legislative are always the same. If they are not, for whatever reason, usually we have a new election. This happens, for example, if one of two partners kills a coalition government. For example, if today the Social Democrats would decide that they will no longer support Angela Merkel uh, as the chancellor, we will have to have a new election because uh, Merkel has no chance to form a new coalition government and the Social Dem Democrats themselves also don't have a majority. This is something that cannot happen in the United States, but is very common in parliamentary systems. Then uh, the next thing that we have is that we are a federal structure. This is why we have a federal council, which is called the Bundesrat in a comparison to the Bundestag here. And the Bundesrat is uh, elected only very indirectly. Every five years, the German people are electing state legislatures. And those state legislatures are, of course, again, in a mirroring of the Bundestag, are electing their minister president, which is basically the chancellor of each state who has a state cabinet. And those are electing representatives to the federal council. So whoever has the majority government within any given state can appoint all federal council members of this state. So the federal council will always mirror the political power relationships within the states. 
So for example, if the conservatives have a majority in all the states, then they will also have a majority in the federal council. But if they do not, the federal council, which has a strong role within the legislative process, can block whatever the Bundestag is trying to do, much like the Senate and the House of Representatives in the United States. Every five years, there is also an election for the president, but really, again, the president is only a ceremonial role, so he doesn't really count here. And that, in a nutshell, is the German political system. If you have any questions left, please leave us a comment, uh, send us an email or whatever. Uh, Twitter is also available. And I hope you enjoyed this little program. Tell us how it was. Bye.